Uh, now we will have a, a Dharma message, a Dharma talk by our supervising minister. Uh, Reverend Henry Adams is resident minister at San Mateo Buddhist Temple. Um, and he it has, since September 1st, he has been BCSF supervising minister. Um, and so with that, I'd like to turn it over to Reverend Adams. I invite you to join me in Gasho as we hear the words taken down by Shindan Shonin and shared for us in the Kyogyo Shinsho. When Shakyamuni was about to enter Nirvana, he said to the bhikshus, From this day on, rely on the Dharma, not on people who teach it. Rely on meaning, not on the words. Rely on wisdom, not on the working of the mind. Rely on the sutras that fully express the meaning, not on those that do not. Hello, and thank you for joining us for the Buddhist Church of San Francisco Nirvana Day service. Uh, as you can see, I'm uh, joining the service from a slightly different venue than usual. Normally, uh, I'm at the San Mateo Buddhist Temple in the Hondo. Uh, however, actually, in the middle of last night, I had a bit of a sore throat, um, and so I'm kind of self-quarantining uh, myself uh, just for a couple of days, um, you know, as we're all trying to um, practice uh, good, safe practices in this time of uh, COVID-19. So I'm here at home, and I'm joining you from my home, Obutsudan. Uh, which in, uh, I think in many ways is a fitting location for today's service uh, as we're also observing our monthly Shotsuki Hoyo for the month of February. Uh, a couple of uh, months ago, I shared a story of my grandmother um, and uh, here is her, her picture it is uh, here uh, in, in the Obutsudan. And so uh, keep that here. So for me, this is um, my place of uh, daily remembrance where I come uh, each morning as well as in the evening to join my hands in Gasho and to recite the sutras and to take comfort uh, in the wisdom and compassion of the Buddha during uh, my day-to-day -day life in these times. So our Nirvana Day service uh, is a time when we remember uh, the life of Shakyamuni Buddha and particularly we reflect upon his passing from this world. Uh, I find that the story of his passing and that the relationships that uh, he had and the way that he guided uh, those who he was close to uh, at that time uh, as they prepared for his departure from the world also provides us with much uh, wisdom and guidance uh, for our own lives and as we remember loved ones on this occasion of also our Shotsuki Hoyo. So Shakyamuni Buddha when he was nearing the end of his life, uh, was living in the community with uh, his fellow monks and nuns, also close to uh, several uh, lay people, leaders, uh, from people of humble station in life to uh, the great kings of his area. One of his closest companions was his cousin Ananda, who was with him uh, throughout uh, his days, always carefully listening to the Dharma that he taught. Towards the end of his life, uh, on one occasion, there was a great and powerful earthquake. And uh, in those days, as in today, uh, when a great natural disaster occurs, uh, we are called to reflect upon our own lives and to look inward and to try to understand what meaning might be provided for our lives uh, through the perspective of things being uh, suddenly changed or uh, a sort of interruption into our daily lives. Just as these days we're living with this interruption of uh, COVID-19 and continuing uh, on the challenges of the pandemic and it's causing us to look inward. So uh, in those days, uh, the disciples of the Buddha then of course went to him for guidance, understand 
uh, what was the meaning of this? And Shakyamuni at that time, he told them, well, at this time I am preparing to leave this world. And as my bonds of karma break with this world, uh, this earth is shaking as a result of that. And so in that moment, the Buddha's disciples realized that he was preparing to uh, depart from this world, to enter into the peace and tranquility of Parinirvana. And so at that time, Ananda, being the uh, careful and thoughtful attendant that he was, he asked the Buddha, uh, well, how shall we prepare once you're gone? What sort of services shall we have? What sort of funeral should we hold uh, to remember and to honor you, our great teacher? And at the time, Shakyamuni said, you know, you monks should really continue to focus on your practices and we can leave the observance of the funeral rites to the householders. But Ananda, being uh, wise and uh, uh, compassionate and having concern for uh, particularly the community of lay followers, he knew that clear guidance would be of great help to the community. And so he pressed the Buddha, and the Buddha then provided clear instructions for uh, the, how he should be cremated, uh, what sort of ceremony should be held, how the cremated remains uh, should be honored uh, following the service. And so Ananda carefully then sets about all of these preparations. That's about preparing for the services, preparing for the Buddha's departure. While the Buddha is still in this world, Ananda's sort of busying himself, preparing with the preparations. And in the midst of that, those preparations, that physical act of preparing, it dawns on him that the Buddha will indeed leave this world. And he pauses and looks within and says, am I ready? Am I ready to say farewell to my teacher? I think we often feel that way uh, when uh, we realize that a loved one is uh, going to be passing from this world. Am I ready for this transformation? Am I ready to live without this person here in my life? And so Ananda then becomes deeply distraught and he secludes himself. He goes into a uh, private place, and he weeps, and he mourns, and he grieves, this anticipatory grief for the departure of his true teacher. And the Buddha notices that he hasn't seen Anand Ananda around. He starts to ask, where, where is Ananda? I haven't seen him. He say, oh, well, he's so distraught that he has secluded himself now, and he's, he's, he's grieving privately. He's weeping, crying. So the Buddha says, bring him here, bring him to me. And so the other disciples, they go, they summon Ananda to the place where the Buddha is. Ananda, uh, you know, clearly, visibly upset as he comes before the Buddha. The Buddha asks him, what troubles you? Ananda says, a true teacher is about to leave from this world. He who has shown such kindness and compassion to me. I have not yet realized awakening. I have not yet become enlightened. How will I be able to do this once the Buddha is gone? The Buddha comforts him and reassures him, saying, You have earned much merit. You have served me with kindness and compassion. You and I have a close bond. But I have taught you clearly time and again Everyone who is born into this world will one day pass from this world. This is a clear truth of our lives. And so, once I am gone, I've left you something that will be your guide, the Dharma. Take the Dharma as your guide. Make the Dharma this lantern in your heart. Be a lantern unto yourself through your own understanding and experience of these true teachings that I've taught. And so Ananda receiving this teaching and comes to a feeling of deep peace of mind. And he continues then to make the preparations, but now thinking about wishing to create a karmic connection 
as many people as possible with the Buddha while he's still in this world. So Ananda goes to all of the families that were close to the Buddha, and he says, many, many people will come to see the Buddha. So I ask, send one representative to come, listen carefully, pay homage to the Buddha, who will then return to share the Dharma with others. And so after the Buddha passes into Parinirvana, Ananda heeds his teachings and continues to practice guided by the Dharma and does indeed realize enlightenment even once the Buddha has passed on. So if you see the traditional pictorial depictions of the life of the Buddha and uh, the end of the Buddha's life, he's lying, you know, lying flat, facing towards the west, and surrounded by him, uh, surrounding him are various disciples, monks, lay people, various animals, elephants, and, uh, tigers, and other creatures. And in the midst of all of this, we see that some are very calm, some are deeply distraught. I think about myself. How would I be? I would probably be among the distraught. I identify with Ananda because I realize that I'm not enlightened yet. But I can also take comfort in Ananda's example in receiving this Buddha's teaching, receiving this message that the Buddha left his teachings to be our guide after he's gone from this world. So as we remember his uh, passing over to the other shore in Pari Nirvana, as we reflect upon these loved ones that we remember in the month of February, we think about what is the Buddha's message for me? What is their message for me in my life? For me, I find that the Buddha's message for me is Namu Amida Butsu. This is also the message I receive all those who I remember month after month who have crossed over to the other shore because Namu Amida Butsu is the voice of the Buddha calling from the world of enlightenment, calling to me in this moment, in the midst of my delusions, frustrations, my uh, clinging and longing. In the midst of all that, I'm being called to clarity. These words, Namu Amida Butsu, this is the Dharma the Buddha left for us to reflect with gratitude on those who have gone before, to receive their example and their guidance for they, having gone forth to realize birth in the world of enlightenment, now they return to guide us. And so, as we reflect upon the life of Shakyamuni Buddha, what is it that he came into this world to do in this lifetime of, for him that was 80 years, for us which may be longer and shorter? What is it that we are here to do? He shows us through his example, his kindness for others. He, realizing perfect awakening, and provides the kind teachings that he passes down to us. For me, the teaching that resonates most deeply in my heart is the teaching of Amida Buddha, the Buddha of boundless compassion, the teaching of the Nembutsu, this voice of the Buddha that we can hear moment to moment in our lives in these words, Namu Amida Butsu. Namu Amida Butsu is the resonating voice the loved ones that we remember today is the resonating voice of Shakyamuni Buddha guiding us to look to the Dharma in our times of difficulty, to take comfort in the Buddha's wisdom and compassion, to allow the Dharma to be the light in our hearts, to be a light unto ourselves, expressing this true wisdom as a reflection of the Buddha Dharma in our words, our thoughts, and our actions. So, once again, it is an honor to be with you here today in this somewhat unusual virtual format, but together in our remembrance, the Buddha together in our remembrance of our loved ones, together in Namu Amida Butsu. Please join me in Gashon. Namu Amida Butsu. 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 Namu Amida Thank you, Reverend Adams.